Joining us now, the top Democrat on the Homeland Security uh, Committee, Senator Claire McCaskill of Missouri. Very good to have you. Um, on board this morning. Uh, I guess we'll start with health care. The yeah. battle over You guys want it back? Do you think they'll get the votes, or is this going to end up back in the laps of Democrats? You know, the thing I can't figure out is they've had six years. I know. They have been preaching replace, replace, replace. It is stunning to me that this is what they've done um, after six years of ostensibly just wanting the opportunity to control government so they can change health care. And the, the biggest problem with this bill, there's two big problems. One is it's $300 billion plus tax cut mm -hmm. for very wealthy. At the same time, a farmer in Rawls County, Missouri, who's 62 years old and makes around 30 grand a year is going to be asked to pay half of his income in health care premiums. I mean, that is outrageous. People between 50 and 64 get killed in this bill. And people in rural Missouri get killed in this bill. It's, it's, it's just not going to work. And yet, if you're watching media coverage and trying to read about it, Michael Steele, and I'm thinking for, you know, uh, average, uh, hardworking American citizens, do you think it's clear exactly what's in this bill, what this bill means as it, as it contrasts to the bill that's in place? No, I, I don't think people have a clear understanding what's in the bill because I, I, I don't think that uh, a lot of folks on the Hill have a clear understanding of what's in the bill and how it plays out. You hear the conflicting arguments about whether or not premiums will increase or reduce its premiums. Well, premiums go up. They just don't go up by the same, by as great a percentage in the out years, you know, maybe 10 percent less but they do go up. Premiums go up every year. Yeah. So there's a lack of honesty, I think, overall from Democrats and Republicans when it comes to this health care debate. It goes back to 2008 when we were told you get to keep your doctors and all of that to what we see going on right now. And I think for that person that you've just described, mm -hmm. this is a seminal moment. They have health care now, some for the first time ever. And the question that I continue to ask my Republican friends and colleagues is, are you prepared to go to that mother or that father right. who has health care for their child for the first time and say that I'm taking that away from you and I'm going to give you something else? And they they don't even know if it's better Claire, or worse. Republicans are saying in this bill, everyone will have access to health care. Well, it's one thing. That's like saying everyone has access to a Rolls Royce. If you can't afford a Rolls Royce, that doesn't really feel like much access. Um, if you can't afford the health care premiums, then that really isn't access. And I really think, I mean, when I think of health care, I remember what it was like before we passed Obamacare. And when I campaigned in 2006, I went to all the farms that had been around for more than 100 years and asked these families, what will it take for your son to stay on the farm? And across the board, they said health care. Farmers are a really good example of people who are not part of a large employee pool. Right. They've got to have some place they can go and get affordable insurance. And for those farm families that are out there in rural Missouri, they are not going to be able to afford this plan. And there's no guarantee the deductibles aren't going to remain high. There's nothing in this plan that reduces health care costs. There's nothing in this plan that guarantees copays aren't going to remain high. We need to go back and reform and help Obamacare, make it better, right. but not not give this Brand kind of throat. and this sop to the wealthy on a huge tax cut. Why do we need to do that right now? Why do we need to give wealthy people a three hundred billion dollar tax cut right now? Doesn't make a lot of sense, David Ignatius. Senator, you're also a member of the Armed Services Committee. The, the military has been rocked over the last week by reports of circulation of uh, nude photographs of women members of the Marine Corps, but apparently other services as well. And I want to ask whether you're troubled by the way in which the military has reacted to this, what this tells us about acceptance of women serving in the Marine Corps and other services. But just give us your sense of Who's what to make of this. Well, um, I sat in a hearing room yesterday for hours yeah. uh, with the leadership of the Marine Corps and then in a closed session with the investigators that are doing the criminal investigation. Keep in mind that the criminal investigators in the Navy are the ones that uncovered this huge scandal as it related to bribery and kickbacks. These are good investigators, and they are taking this very seriously. But I have to say, one of the things I want to see happen, I've written a letter to Secretary Mattis. I want them to proactively go after this stuff in all the services. The idea that a journalist 
had to uncover this. They had some heads up that there were problems like this in 2013, and clearly they didn't put it at the top of the list. Uh, this kind of online harassment is real, and it's a real problem as women integrate into the Marines and all of the services that they take this seriously and realize this is all about good order and discipline, and this is all about conduct and becoming an officer. And we've got to make sure that in this instance, they show that they can use the wide range of tools they have in the military to discipline not only the Marines that did this, but some of the commanders that, it that may like have they known dragged, it. Like they dragged their feet, Senator. Well, it sounds like they didn't take it seriously enough. It sounds like they didn't realize how damaging this can be. I have to agree because the reaction was, it's on us, we're sorry. I mean, let's take a look. I believe this is Senator Kirsten Gillibrand um, um, questioning a uh, uh, top member of the Marines. Take a look. Who has been he held responsible? Have you actually uh, investigated and found guilty anybody? If we can't crack Facebook, how are we supposed to be able to confront Russian aggression and cyber hacking throughout our military? Who is being held accountable for doing nothing since 2013? Who? Which commander? I'm still in, in the process. I mean, I, I don't have a good answer for you. I'm not going to sit here and duck around this thing. I'm not. I'm responsible. I'm the commandant. I own this. And we are going to have to, you know, you know, you've heard it before. But we're going to have to change how we see ourselves and how we do, how we treat each other. Um, that's a that's a lame answer, but ma'am, that's all. I've, that's the best I can tell you right now. So what does that exactly mean? I I'm appreciate it, but it doesn't. Well, really I, I will say this: assure. it was refreshing that he didn't. You know, he took he took responsibility and blame. Said okay. that you know we have we have we have not done this the way it needs to be done, but I can assure you, yeah. Kirsten and I have worked very hard at doing a long list of reforms in the Uniform Code of Military Justice to help survivors of sexual assault, and on that list are things that, like making retaliation a standalone crime. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a moment because some of these women have been retaliated against who have exactly. come forward. This is a moment for them to show that they'll use every tool in the toolbox to, to, to show how serious they are about making sure that women do not feel that they're going to be subjected to this kind of abuse. Thank you for your work on this. You Senator bet. Claire McCaskill, thank you very much. You Always come back, please. Yeah. Up next. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.